Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Wednesday, May 3, 2023. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? In short, after some back and forth type behavior, the market finished slightly down on the day following the Fed announcement, FOMC announcement, Jerry's presser, you know, Kabuki Theater. So we'll put that aside and we'll just talk about the numbers and the chart. Where are we? What's jumping off the page on the daily chart? Well, first, they tested yesterday's lows. They chose not to close below yesterday's low. What's the next number down that the bears will want to get priced below and the bulls will fight them from doing that? Write this on a sticky note, 406. 75 below that and they retest the lows from the 26th and then into the 50 period moving average there's also a gap down here at 401.35 those are the near-term numbers depending on where we're opening up tomorrow obviously inside the number members will have what we call the schematic the first part of that will be up on the board at zero dark 30 speaking of inside the numbers We had a bit of a bonanza in the morning session today before we shut it down in front of the spectator sport known as Kabuki Theater. We've got three days under our belt this week. Let's turn our attention to the weekly chart. This will become extremely important by Friday's close. Now, here's where we are. Last week, ran a test and popped back up, finished extremely positive. The low was 403.78. That's the bogey for the weekly close for now close below there, and they may not just be going into the 20-period moving average. Close below last week's low is a negative sign. They will have recaptured some stuff on the downside. Beware. Just put it this way. Running a test last week, making it look like the market was going down, finishing on the highs, and then closing back below last week's lows is a negative period full stop. About a little intermission, we still have our short oil trade going. We used SCO. This thing's up 25% from the purchase price. How you doing? 23.76 is where we bought it on this day, the 24th of last month. Here's a 120-minute chart. Let's do a little bit of a lesson. We had a tremendous breakdown candle yesterday. Today, the market began climbing up the breakdown candle in a bearish wedgish formation, didn't make it to the top, but was summarily rejected. And you'll see where it was rejected. It was actually on the board for inside the number members all day long. In fact, the live room knew this before the opening bell, and it was on the board for inside the number members before the opening bell. 413 and a quarter was my short play this morning. There's 413 and a quarter, Here's a 15-minute chart, and unfortunately, they did it during Kabuki Theater. That's not the same trade as if they did it in the morning session. Little bit of a sneak peek preview. When we look at the 240-minute chart, the first thing that jumps off the page at me, other than the fact that they're below the 50 and 20 period moving average, is we have some symmetry possible. The symmetry does bring price in the vicinity of the same number I gave you before, which is 406.75, give or take. There's a gap just under that, so it's a give or take. How about inside the numbers? It's hump day, Kabuki Theater, FOMC, and Jerry's Presser Day. We'll have the morning rush, which we did, followed by a floater into the announcement at 2 o'clock, which we did. That's normal garden variety market behavior. Then they'll whip them around for a while, pick a direction, and go. They did that. Which way is the mystery for now? You don't know whether they were going to go up or down. They did both, but then finally, after the presser, they picked the direction, and that's where they ended up at the end of the day. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart, and do your thing. 4.12.05 is important. And remember this one? Getting above on candle closes gives the bulls something to cheer about, along with another leg higher to the likes of 4.13.05. 25. You'll see that narrow down to a small zone later in the notes. 
getting below 411 and staying there opens a door for a test of 409.30. However, you'll see that narrow down as well. Once the market opens and we have a better handle on the velocity that the tape is trading at, is it quiet, is it light volume, is it heavy, is it wild, is it not, we can narrow down the numbers and you'll see that also in the notes. So by the way, pause the video, read them, double check them, meaning double check the work. 411, 41205. We think better in pictures focused by the left-hand side by the vertical line, not the Kabuki Theater in the afternoon. What you'll see is the 41205 and what traders were told in the room, and you'll see it in the notes as well, a spike of 412, 41205 is overhead resistance. A spike could mean 10 cents, 25 cents. In this case, I think it was about 60 cents or so, but it is overhead resistance and they never got close to the next number in question. That was our first short scalp trade of the day inside the numbers and in the live room. Scalp with potential, that is. Where was the first long trade, by the way? And you'll see this in notes right here. 10.15, and the exact number was 4.11.40. It was on the board. It was discussed in the room. Where did they go? Right back to 4.12. When we put it out, it was said to be a four, five, six point scalp trade. You have to exit before 412. That was the trade. That was the second trade of the day. Remember, pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart, double check the work. What's the scoop? 411 is a spot for now. That's on a drop. It's our early pivot above. The door is open for a spike above 412. Closing candles above 412 is another leg higher. Mrs. Market is going to have to prove that one in real time. Mrs. Market is going to prove that one, meaning the next leg higher, in real time. Below 411, 410.20 is the first order of business, the first line of defense for the bulls. Now the zone becomes down to 409.30. Back to the pictures, the low here, 410.30, they didn't get to 410.20, they came awfully close which qualifies for the give or take, give and take. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart, double check the work. 931, 412 and a spike of it is overhead resistance. Aggressive short scalp. Closing candles above begins to open the door for higher stuff. No change, a spike of 412 is overhead resistance a few minutes later. This was the thing on the board. 10.03, back below, and they fall a little, staying above, and they're eating time off the clock. They fell. You saw that already. 10.14, there's your pullback for the scalp off of the 4.12 or spike of 4.12. 4.11.40 down to 4.11, give or take, is short-term support. They could bounce the tape there. You saw they bounced the tape at 4.11.40. Plenty of traders in the room took that trade. And there's your scalp a few minutes later off 4.11.40. You see how this works? The numbers work. Not every one of them, not every single time, but by and large, using the 80-20 rule, the numbers work. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart to double check the work. There's your zone, 413 and a quarter, 413.85 is the top end of the zone. You saw what happened when they got up there after Kabuki Theater. It's mainly a spectator sport. What about stocks on the move? What do we have on the board today? We had five, three of them, actually four of them, hit their entry objectives. One was late in the day. It doesn't really count, but we'll look at all the charts anyway, except Yum. Yum didn't do it. It's off the board. It's a no trade. CVS getting a haircut at the opening bell. $70.30 was the first number. The next one was just over a dollar lower. They didn't get there. They pulled up short, ripped it back in the other direction, gave you the deal, base hit, Thank you very much. Base hits put you in the Hall of Fame. A lot of participation in the room on this one and inside the numbers. AMD was the one that hit into the end of the day. They came close in the morning. They came closer in the early afternoon. They came closest and a spike through and a rip higher back in the afternoon. We can't really call that one a rip. It just came out. Starbucks ended up bouncing before the first number after its haircut. Came into the second number, bounced halfway back. I believe that was the base hit. And then you see what happened with the third number. No great shakes, but they did provide the base hit. Estee Lauder, EL, is in a different camp all by itself. You got to zero in on this one. Stock closed yesterday at 245.24.
Stock is getting creamed at the open. Pick the number down at 193.78. Think about that for a second. Closing price, 245 and change. 173.78. It made a low of 173.49 and bounced all the way up. And here's a one minute chart. Four minutes later to a high of 200 bucks or over $6 in four minutes. Then what happened? They ran a test of the second number and took a rocket ride all the way up to 210. How you doing? And believe it or not, We did have participation on this one in the room, despite how much they were down. It looks like a falling knife. I talk about this from time to time. It's not a falling knife. They're running a test of something. If you have an idea of where the numbers are, it's not a falling knife. It all depends on how you look at the situation. Hence, a little bit of a bonanza today for the morning session inside the numbers and inside the numbers live room. And by the way, We're having a blast in the live room. Traders are making money in there. There's no two ways about it. Post something under the video. Either way, are you having a good time in the room? Are you struggling in the room? What's the situation? Let's hear from the people in the room. Don't just take my word for it. What's going on over in Camp IWM? They were up on the day a buck, six tenths of one percent, but you can see what happened here. They tried to rally today. They finally filled that gap up there. Hit the 20 period moving average and fell away, finishing near the lows of the day, yet up on the day. It's not a positive just because they're up on the day. And yes, there is relative strength. We do note that, but finishing at the lows of the day is not necessarily a positive for Camp IWM, considering where we are on the chart. Below all the moving averages, the trend is your friend until your shit gets thrown out the window. And the weekly chart, below all the moving averages in a bearish type of flaggish type of formation looks terrible. Nonetheless, my favorite market leading indicator, so big picture, chart looks terrible. They finished up on the day. At least that is something. It is a puzzle piece. It's on the table, but the day finished negative as a whole. As much as they were up earlier, they fell all the way back down. So that is a negative that outweighs the fact that they were up six tenths of 1%. It is my favorite market leading indicator. However, what about the folks down at the transportation department? Same routine, finished up on the day just a little bit, but up nonetheless. So there is relative strength in my two favorite market leading indicators. This is the second one, but this is also a number one canary in the coal mine. Tomorrow will tell us more than today. Today could just be back and forth, shakeout operation. We don't know. Tomorrow will give us a better indication of what the market thinks about the Fed's decision and what Jerry Powell had to say. I have no idea what he had to say. I don't know what the questions were. It doesn't really matter. The charts will actually tell you the story. It doesn't matter what he says. It's the market's reaction to what he says that matters. So when I say the market will tell the story, if the market is down, it's having a negative reaction to whatever he said. Who gives a shit what he said? What about the Q people? A down day just like the spiders, but about half a percent. It's not that big of a deal. Maybe they're just running another test of the 20 period moving average. Maybe they're going to run a test of the breakup candle low 315 and change. That's not that far away. Doesn't really change much on the chart when you take into consideration what they're doing on the weekly chart. Now, if they start to fall and they get below and close the week below, just like the spiders, Last week's low, 309.89, that's a problem in not only the Qs, but across the board. What about the financials, the XLF? This trend line is valid. This is the bottom end of a channel. We talked about it last night, and what did we say? If they get below and they stay below, it opens a door down here, first order of business. Then there's a gap, then there's another gap. There's all kinds of stuff. Get below one, it opens a door for the next. That's the way the market works. Doesn't mean they have to get to the next. The door is open until or unless they would get back above the first number. So for example, let's say they get to this pivot low here. And that exact number happens to be 3166. So let's say they get below 3166. Door is open for the gap over here at 3141. And these numbers are close by. We're just using it for learning purposes as the example. Get below the gap and start closing candles below the gap. This is a daily chart, but that still works 
from an intraday perspective on an hourly basis or any other candle for that matter. The longer, it's about time, the longer they're below a certain price, the more likely they are to get to the next price. Time is more important than price in more ways than one. About Smash Mouth, rejected at the convergence of moving averages, 20 and 50, coming back down. Once again, the weekly chart will tell the tale. They really need to stay above that 100 period moving average. However, the other low, just like the other charts, 237.14 is last week's low. That's going to be extremely important. Closing below last week's low doesn't necessarily mean this breakup candle low is going to hold. That's a negative if they did it. That's a change in the market if they close below last week's low. Not just in one chart, but all the ones we looked at. It's a change in the character of the market. Buyer beware if they close below last week's low. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.